I um, just want to take you through uh, how this uh, generalized motion solver actually works. Um, the first part of the problem is to define this path here uh, and uh, Excel does this for us quite nicely uh, by fitting a polynomial equation, a sixth order polynomial equation which uh, has uh, A, B, C, D, E, F and G which can be easily calculated using uh, native Excel formula there, uh, and there's a there's a link here to uh, a page on the Excel Calc uh, homepage that would help to explain that if you want to know in a little bit more detail. Uh, it is a generalized equation solver, so we can obviously change the mass at any time. We could we could we could in fact uh, t change uh, the whole um, characteristic of the problem if you like by uh, setting g to be zero. So in what I'm going to try to do now is to solve a, a problem where this is uh, calculating the forces, imagine this is a car, and uh, trying to solve the forces and accelerations as the car uh, uh, traverses along this path. Um, down here we have um, a couple of values here that are important to the numeric solution. I'm going to come back to these uh, a, a little later on. But because uh, because there's the velocity isn't going to change now because I set uh, gravity to be zero, I'm going to send my car down the path uh, or along the road that we've defined from the geometry uh, at say 50 meters per second, uh, maybe a crazy speed because that's probably about um, about 110 miles per hour. Now the way uh, we uh, calculate everything is we calculate everything based upon the previous time step. So we have uh, a couple of values here at uh, time equals zero and then what we do is we make use of uh, this free body diagram and this equation of motion here and you can see that if we rearrange this uh, equation which is what we've done in this point here then uh, we can uh, solve for at the tangential uh, the tangential acceleration so we can solve for the tangential acceleration but in fact what we do we sneakily use the previous velocity value so the t time acceleration uh, tangential acceleration at time 1 uh, i'm going to use the uh, velocity uh, value at time zero. So once we have an acceleration term I can then calculate a new velocity because the new velocity is simply the old velocity plus the acceleration times the small time step. And again we can do the same thing for um, position, the x position. The x position is uh, the old x position plus a, uh, a velocity term times a time step. Uh, it's obviously only the velocity term that is in the x-plane. That's why we uh, resolve through to the x-plane there. But of course, once we have a, we have now an acceleration of velocity and an x-position, uh, we can calculate many other things. So we can calculate the y-position because we've got our generalized uh, polynomial uh, equation there, which we've already solved for. So we've calculated our y-position. I can calculate uh, the uh, x-position slightly ahead because I want to work out. Uh, a gradient, so I can use this value and this value here to, to calculate a gradient. But I'm also going to need to know the second differential of gradient because I use that to calculate the radius at any particular point. Now the radius is an important term when it comes to calculating the um, uh, the circular motion acceleration, or I've called it here the perpendicular uh, acceleration. Uh, there's a little link here to Wikipedia where I found the radius of curvature formula that might be useful to some of you um, but let's see what happens now we can uh, use our animator again and this time we're going to we're going to just uh, go from time 0 to 30 and we'll press play so it's moving at a constant velocity now uh, and it's going to go backwards and forwards I might just move it a little bit over here so we can see how far along the path it gets in 30 seconds. It makes it this far along. Then it I'm just making it return there, or the animator makes it return. The velocity um, is uh, reducing, uh, and I had to think for a second why it's reducing. It's reducing because I've got the uh, damping uh, term on. So in fact, that's that's why it's uh, reducing as it moves along the path. Uh, we have a tangential acceleration, and I guess that's changing as well because of the velocity term. But uh, the 
acceleration I was more interested in was this one here which shows that as we go around that curve that first curve where we're, we're picking a side we, we, we've got a sidewards uh, acceleration of about 1g so unless we have uh, super super sticky tires uh, I think that means we're going to fly off the the road if we try to get around that corner at 110 miles per hour um, let's just move a little bit further up and we'll go back to this table here and all those formulas that I described for um, I'm just going to turn off uh, the animate, it's a bit distracting close that down uh, all those formulas for acceleration and then velocity and then x are all calculated here so in fact all the formulas that I've, I've already been through uh, represent all the equations here and obviously these are the initial values uh, and then it, these are the uh, the next time step and then the next time step and so on and so forth and so we have our solution uh, for any particular time t uh, I hope you can see that um, this calculation is very flexible it's been used to solve a, a roller coaster and the problem of a car uh, uh, moving uh, along a road so uh, maybe you might find uh, a useful application for it as well thank you very much for listening